Good morning and welcome to our special Access Freshers event. This is the first time I think that we've done a live broadcast like this just for Freshers Access students, so you are very welcome. I know we probably have people here who aren't Access students as well, but it's lovely to have lots of people here finding out about their new student journey and finding out what the Open University can do for them. My name's Isabella Henman. I'm a tutor and I'm an Access tutor on the module. You might have seen me in the little video as we were just starting, and I'm the presenter of these events. And you'll see that there's a variety of different questions we ask you along the way. You can use the chat as much as you can. I've got a number of people that are my guests today. So I have got Bryn with me. I have got Bethan with me. I have got Sean with me and I've got Karen with me. And all those lovely people, you can see them there and I'll be coming to them a bit later. And I've also got Heidi, who I'm going to be coming to next. So Heidi is sort of the person that, that is my mediator telling me what's been going on in the chat. And I know the chat's already very lively, Heidi. So what's been going on so far? It is Isabella. Hello and welcome to everyone. Lovely to have you all with us. So as Isabella said, my name is Heidi. Um, I studied with the OU myself, so I know exactly what you're going through. I completely appreciate those feelings of trepidation and feeling a bit apprehensive when you first start studying with the Open University. Um, I studied for six years and absolutely loved it. And I know that you will too. Um, so time to say some hellos this morning. So I want to say hello to Anne in Cornwall. So Anne is coming back to study again after 40 years, which is really incredible. So wow. welcome, Anne. And Daniel, this is my first time with the OU and distance learning. And Daniel is in Dorset. So we've got lots of people joining us that are studying various modules. So Y034, which is psychology, social science and well-being. That's the access module, obviously. We've got Becky, we've got Colette, we've got Ella and Lisa, and we've got Pamela in Somerset. Good morning to you. And on Y033, which is the science, technology and maths access module, we've got Lou, we've got Daniel and we've got Matthew in West Yorkshire as well. So good morning to you. And on Y031, which is Arts and Languages, the access module, Deanne uh, says it's lovely to see everybody here. We've got Sophie in Plymouth. Uh, we've got Tim, who's studying from sunny Brighton. And we've got Sally, um, who's starting Y031. And Sally is from Essex. Just a quick note to say, if you find the chat's going quite quickly, on the top right-hand side, there's a little pin. If you just press on that, it will slow down the chat for you, and it makes it a little bit more manageable. We've also got some widgets there. So if you play around with those let us know where you're studying from um, and you can see there on the map that we um, if you're in the UK you can pinpoint exactly where it is you're joining us from so lovely to have you with us this morning Thank you. And in fact, I think we've got that map ready. So let's see. This is where I show my absolutely rubbish geography. Uh, I'm not even going to try and guess where most of those are, but it's good to see people. Oh, we've got people right down in the bottom of Cornwall. See, I can work out where Cornwall is. And we've got people in. I'm not sure whether that is actually into Scotland or whether that's the borders. My geography is I don't study geography. I don't teach geography. That's my excuse. But it's lovely to have people there. And I think we've also got the widget of what people are studying. That might be ready to show you the answers of that so far. Let's see whether we can get that up. Uh, oh, this is what people are feeling. Oh, this is lovely. OK, so I'm. Oh, that's good. I'm really glad to see that excited is the biggest one there, but nervous and apprehensive. I'm pleasantly lost. Oh, that is a really, really lovely one. <laughs> pleasantly lost. Hopefully you will feel less lost by the end of this. I've got my lovely guests will be telling you things. So I've got people that work for the university and I've also got Sean, who's a student that's been through, who will be able to tell you from his perspective what it's actually like. So I'll come to Sean a little bit later. But first, I've got Bryn. And now Bryn is a curriculum manager with the Open University and Access. What's a curriculum manager? Bryn, can you tell us about that, please? I can, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so uh, a module, like any of the Access modules, takes quite a bit of um, planning and organising to get it out to you, to get your module materials out, um, to make sure that everything works and as far as possible there aren't any mistakes in it um, and so that's my job is to do the planning and the organizing behind the scenes to make sure that people get their mailings that you the content um, on the website is all there and it's you know it's all working the way it should and then um, also to just deal with any issues that come up um, as and when really 
fantastic. Well, now we're hoping there's not going to be any of those, those issues. But you know what? They, sometimes things happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For time, definitely the fingers crossed one there. So you mentioned a mailing and a mailing that people might have had. I know I was very excited. I got mine. I intercepted the, the person in the road and went, is that for me? Oh, it's my open university mailing. So people might have got a mailing. Can you tell them a little bit about what they will have got through the post so far? Hopefully. Yeah. So the biggest thing will probably be uh, your block one book, which you'll have regardless of Snap. I've got one. Whoops, I've got the leaflet as well. Oh, I've got I've got Very loads of copies of the leaflet. You've got everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so everyone will have one of these um, module specific. So if you wire through one, your book will be different to wire through three or wire through four. And then you will also have the start here leaflet, which I think we've got to show you. And that is a really useful thing to kind of read straight off because um, it contains a lot of useful information. If you've got questions, then hopefully some of the answers will be there and some contact details as well. So have a look at that. Um, people will also have study planners. Uh, you'll have an assessment guide that tells you a lot about your assignments and a lot of information about how to do them. Um, and you'll also have some kind of possibly some sort of module specific resources. So like for YO33, you'll get a calculator and a calculator booklet. For YO31, you'll probably have some booklets that have pictures and poems in. Um, so yeah, look out for those as well. There's also a checklist in every mailing that tells you what should be in it. So if you check that against what you've got and you find you're missing anything, then you can contact the distribution help desk and they will send it out to you. Yeah, if you're anything like me, I love checklists. I love ticking things <laughs> off. It's great. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then I get really confused. I go, is that what that is? Because I don't necessarily. We're all like that, aren't we, Bryn? We don't necessarily read instructions, do we? So, yeah, very much look at your checklist. Then <laughs> look at your Start Here leaflet, which is, yeah, that was what I was very enthusiastic. It turns out I've got three copies of the Start Here leaflet. I'm not quite sure why. Obviously, I think it's really important that I keep keeping it. <laughs> 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 it's very useful, as I said, if there's anything missing, if you registered late, there's a chance you might not have had the mailing yet. And there's also, it's a quite yeah. important thing to mention about practicalities in terms of making sure your details are up to date, isn't it, Bryn? Because the any paper mailings will go to the address that you've given the university. So if you move around, yeah. if you've had a change of it, just, just check that one. That's a good idea, isn't it, Bryn? Definitely, yeah. Uh, if, uh, if anything changes in terms of personal details, just let us know through student home yeah um contact your sst let us know yeah and oh sst we've started on Sorry. the green letter acronym, acronym. already <laughs> that's bad your student what support SST? team your Fantastic. student support Thank team you. which are a lovely bunch of people um, yeah, that are waiting to I got you. pulled up on that on on Tuesday. I got pulled up for using the word TMA, and I got told you need to tell people what they are. That's one thing. It's a really special part of being the university. There's all sorts of three letter acronyms, and it's a lovely little club. Um, a lovely, and you get used to these terms, and you use them in everyday life. And other people look at you, and you go, "What are you talking about? <laughs> What's a TMA? Yeah. <laughs> or What's an SST?" And you're like. I'm an OU student, don't you know? I know these things, which is really good. <laughs> but, have a whole secret language. Also, it is, and it's a really, and it's a special secret language that you get used to. So yeah. we've mentioned that there are paper mailings. It's probably worth highlighting to people. It mentions in the start here booklet as well. It's only block one that people get in print, isn't it? And that's something that's quite important yeah. for people to recognise. Yeah, so block two and three are studied online. We've got a module website that you can get into from Student Home and um, that will contain all of that content for, for block two and three, um, which is really great actually, because it means that we can do things like videos, we can do um, interactive activities. Um, you know, it, it being online means that you can go and do um, a bit of research as well and we kind of guide you through that in terms of using other websites to find reliable information to help your studies and also the forums are on there which will allow you to talk to other students on your module and kind of chat about studies and, and life and stuff so I think it's it's really helpful um, so much of life is online these days isn't it you know it's, it's kind exactly of skills to have Absolutely. And that's probably one thing that some people might be used to, particularly those people who've been out of study for quite a long time. 
sometimes people struggle a little bit and say, well, I want everything printed. I'm used to studying um, in printed format. That's why we give you the block one in printed format. But then we encourage you because life is online. The great thing is everybody watching this at the moment, you're online. You're used to doing things. And it's absolutely fantastic to have people here today because the module hasn't started yet. The module doesn't start until the beginning of October. You won't. That's actually probably worth mentioning now. We'll probably mention it again later. You won't have tutor allocations until probably the end of next week because there's lots of things still happening. So don't worry that you haven't got your tutor. Don't worry if there's some things in the module website when you're looking around, aren't there? Yeah, they will all come in time. Now, we did ask a question earlier, um, which is, oh, I've just seen somebody saying TMA means too many assignments. Love that one. I haven't trust, that one before. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Um, but yeah, we want to ask you, you might have seen it came across the screen earlier about what's your motivation for study. So if you can be answering that in the chat, what is the, what motivated you to study? What motivated you to come and do an access course? Or if you're here and you're not doing an access course, what else? Um, actually, that's the thing. If, you, if you're studying, what motivates you to study? What motiv Is it about bettering yourself, Bryn? What kind of things do you think of? Um, I so I love to study stuff that I'm kind of interested in. Um, I, I tend to kind of go for various just different subjects. So my first degree was an arts degree, and I just okay. sort of love learning new stuff, really. So I did a creative writing module a year or two ago now, um, just to just kind of expand that skill set because I write for a hobby. Um, and it's, just, it's great. I think it's really exciting to be able to access knowledge from other people um, and to be able to think of things in different ways and learn things that, you know, I've never thought of, I've never come across. I just find that really exciting. So for me, it's about the interest. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing to bring out because people that are starting with an access course, many people might not have studied for a long time or they might have had some negative experiences at school where you're forced to study something. So you're choosing to study. And that's, as Bryn said, it's exciting, isn't it? It's lovely because you're studying because you're interested in something because you want to do something. I've, I'm starting my new module myself. Uh, I'm very excited. I'm doing a, a master's mental health module to find out more about that, to find out about different things to help to inform my job as well. And, and it's quite interesting because you get to find things. And, and you mentioned about learning from other people, Bryn. That's quite an interesting thing about being at university, isn't it? Particularly with the Open University. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, to me, that's kind of the point of any university study is, and, and that it's really the foundations of academia, is this idea that we need to share ideas in order to make progress in any kind of study that we do. And that's not just learning from um our kind of professors and lecturers and stuff, even though obviously they all tend to be very learned because that's their job. Um, but I think you get incredible insights just from other people's lives and shared experiences and knowledge. You know, we're all unique people. We all think about stuff. We all have ideas about things. And being able to learn from other people's perspectives, I think, is really powerful. And it often gives us ideas that we might not have come across otherwise and, and you get a kind of fusion of ideas that way and new things come out of that and you know I think that's really exciting. And that's great. And it's one of the things, part of Student Hub Live that we do, We, as well as these live broadcasts, we do online workshops. And part of them is learning from other people. And I love the idea that you say about the fusion of ideas, because we learn from other people all the time. Now, we've had some people who've said about their motivation. So Jackie says, my motivation was a case of feel the fear and do it anyway. Wow, Jackie. Gosh, hopefully you don't feel too much fear. <laughs> Stacey said, I decided... I can't. Oh, and I've started not being able to talk already. That's great. <laughs> I kept doing that. Bit. Right. So I'll try but again. Stacey said, I decided to start studying now as my health was bad for a few years. Now I'm better. My children are at school. It's time to do something for me. Similar to Caitlin. So I said, I had my two children young. I put my dreams on the back burner. Now they're in school. It's my time. It's a nice feeling. We're all exactly where we're meant to be. I love that one. Lou said, I always wanted to study. Had to drop out of A-levels due to chronic illness and caring responsibilities. Years later, my therapist convinced me to have a look at the OU. I didn't know it was an, even an option for me until then, so I'm really grateful. And Colette says, my nine-month-old son is my motivation. Want to better our lives. Now, I know somebody else, actually, who started studying with the OU when their son was nine months old. And I think it's probably an apt point to go to Heidi now, because I know that that's something that you said before. And I know that you've also probably got lots of other things that people are saying. So could you actually tell people a little bit about your your study history because I know you said that you started studying when your son was nine months old didn't you 
Yeah, I'm so impressed by your memory, Isabella. That's so good. You remembered it to the exact <laughs> month. Yeah, back in 2009. So I'm a single mom and I've raised my boy on my own. I just had the one boy and um, just after he was born, I actually previously used to work in radio and was due to go off. I was actually relocating. I was going to go to the United States. I'd got an internship over there. So everything was sorted. I'd handed in my notice on my job. I'd got rid of my um, little flat that I had by myself. And I was at work one day and I remember thinking, "Mm, I feel a little bit strange. I don't feel too well. And anyway, it transpired that I was expecting. So my son was a beautiful surprise. But at that point, I thought, what on earth am I going to do with my life? Because radio is definitely not child friendly, especially as a single mom. So I thought, what on earth am I going to do? Um, my mum studied with the OU. My sister had studied with the OU. And I thought, do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'll just give it a try. So I started studying with the OU. Absolutely loved it. Fell in love with the OU and everything about the Open University. And then I started working here because I just love it so much. And then I went on to do postgrad and I graduated in 2020. So I've now, no, 2022, sorry. So I've now got two degrees. Um, So lots and lots of hard work, but has been an amazing experience. And I actually work now as alumni engagement manager for the Open University. So you're going to hear from me in six years time, or however long it is that you're (laughs) studying with us for, you're going to hear from me in a few years time and I come knocking and say hello you're now part of the alumni association so um, yes it's lovely to be here and see you all <clears throat> oh sorry this is a problem when you snack when you're uh, just before you go on air so um just people have been talking about their motivations um so Nicola I was motivated to do the access course because I scribe for my son who's doing his A levels and has mm-hmm. ASD and over the last few years I've grown more and more interested in what he's studying and thought I want to learn all this for myself so I love that one Nicola that's fantastic mm-hmm. um Pamela my motivation was to improve my job prospects after being a full-time carer for my son who has AS, uh, ASD on the autistic spectrum um Hanifa I wish to break into the industry I want to work in and this is a really good way to do so. Uh, Nicola, uh, oh, sorry, Nicola was having a conversation with Dean about um, being torn between um, classics and history or just pure history. So lots of people discussing in the chat about what courses they want to go on to do. So Alison is a full-time carer um, for her mum. She wants to do something from home. Lisa, I signed up because I'm hoping to start a new career and I chose Y034 to help me decide which route to take. Such a great idea, Lisa. When you're at a bit of a crossroads, taking the access course and then using that to help you decide where you want to go is a brilliant idea. And I'm retired and my motivation was to use my brain and meet lots of new people and test myself and do something interesting. Love that. Sophie, I left school with very few qualifications over 20 years ago and always wondered if I could have done university level training. The time is now to find out. Yes, indeed, Sophie, you're Mm -hmm. in the right place. And Margaret, it's more than 40 years since I was at school. I've always wanted to study at degree level, but I feel I need an access course to get me started. My last essay was with a pen and paper. Lovely to have you with us, (laughs) Margaret. This is fantastic. So exciting as you embark on this new adventure. It is. It's wonderful. And that's lovely. That seems to be the the, the 40 years seems to be a thing. Obviously, there's something about that. So it's great to have people here. Now, within what what Heidi was talking about there, she mentioned ASD. She she mentioned autism and disabilities. Now, that's something I wanted to talk to Bryn about next is because as an open university, we actually have a number of students. In fact, we have more students registered with us that have disabilities than any other universities. So we've mentioned things like the printed book and we've mentioned the module websites that we have. But we can support and we can give additional support, can't we, Bryn, to students with disabilities? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely, yeah. So um, we have a disability support team. um, And if you need additional support because you have a disability, then the first most important thing we need you to do is tell us um, so that we can provide that support. Um, We are able to offer just a variety of things depending. Um, Some people need printed versions of the online materials uh, because they can't study online for a variety of reasons. Um, some people need audio versions of the, the books that we, we can provide that as well. Um, and we can do alternative versions of hard copy stuff as well. So for example, the block one book, um, we can do that comb bound for people that have, um, so I've used that before because I have fibromyalgia. 
and I find it hard to turn pages. It hurts to mm-hmm. kind of bend the spine back. So I've had um, OU books ring bound before, um, and they can be done in large print, and they can be done sometimes in different coloured paper because that sometimes helps our neurodivergent students. So there's a huge amount of support that we can give, um, and the once you've started and you know who your tutor is, then your tutor can provide some support and a referral to the student support team if you need it. But actually, at this point, when you don't know who your tutor is, um, the disability support team is there and you can contact them and they will happily walk you through all of the processes um, to kind of get whatever additional support that you need because we, we want you to succeed. You know, yeah, whatever additional needs you have shouldn't be a bar, shouldn't be a barrier to, to you succeeding. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing. It's about not having a barrier. So accessibility, and we want to be as inclusive as possible to welcome people to make sure there's no barriers to learning. We did have somebody from the disability support team in our broadcast yesterday being a great OU learner, and Becky explained some more about that then. So there were some really useful things. So if you didn't see that one, that watch again will be available soon. So it's about... This new journey for people, it's about exploring a lot of the time, isn't it, Bryn? And about seeing, because we've got the three different modules and they're a very wide base, aren't they? But it's about thinking about seeing what you want to do, exploring. Is there anything else that you can think of that you really, really want people to know as they're starting off? Um, I think enjoy it. I think, um, I feel like, I mean, I was, I was lost at school a horribly long time ago now in the 90s. Um, and, it, you know, school often felt like a competition um, in the sense that uh, you knew how you had done in your year because there would be prizes and top tens and things like that. And that is sometimes not very helpful, I think, especially once you're an adult. Mm-hmm. It's a very big world and there are lots of people in it and there is really no point in competing. So I think I would say just think about what you want to achieve how you want to progress and develop, you know, and um, you will, you will progress as you do the access module. You're going to learn stuff. You're going to do things you've never done before that you didn't know you could do. And you, and I think enjoy that success and kind of um, yeah. try and benchmark your success against your own progress, not anybody else's and against your own goals and not anybody else's, you know, success for you is what you define for yourself. Um, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that I want to echo that. And I, I, I know I kept talking about it in yesterday's broadcast, but you are all individuals. Please hear me with this one. You are individuals. You are on your study journey. Don't benchmark yourself. As Ben says, please don't benchmark. Don't compare yourself against others. If you find that healthy, fine. A little bit of competition is fine for some people. But if you're constantly going, I'm not good enough because somebody else is doing that, please don't think that. Now, we talked about benchmarking. We do actually have assessment. Now, we had the, the tongue-in-cheek version of what <laughs> too much assignment was, DMAs earlier. But we do have assessment on the access modules for a specific reason, don't we, Bryn? Could you explain yeah. a bit about why the university actually wants to do assessments? Yeah, I think so. Assessment is important. It lets you practice the skills that you're learning, your academic skills in the module, um, whether that's essay writing or carrying out experiments and writing them up, depending on what you're doing. Um, and it allows so it allows you to to do it and to find out, you know, work out how to do it in that sense to gain that skill because you gain it by doing it. Um, and it also allows you to demonstrate that you can do it as well. So your tutor can look at that, but also your tutor can then give you feedback um, to tell you what you've done well, and to also provide pointers for how you can, you know, how you can improve or things you can try differently and things like that. So it's a really great point of um, interaction with your tutor. Actually, right. um, I think it's important not to think of it as a test in the sense of a kind of a right and wrong black and white scenario it's a think of it more as um as a dialogue in that sense i guess just a little bit more practical and and writing based Thank you, Bryn. And that's actually really helpful. And that leads me on to my, the next guest that I want to talk to. Thank you, Bryn, for your insight. Beth Ann is another tutor, but both Beth Ann and I are, are tutors with the, you know, with the University of Access. We're different tutors. So Bryn was saying about having a dialogue with your tutor. Now, as a tutor yourself, how would you, how would you want to have a dialogue with your students, Beth Ann? Hi, everyone. Um, Great to see you, Isabella, and and talk about this with you. We we often talk about, as you might have seen in that video earlier on, like what it's like being an access tutor. 
And really the best thing is just getting to meet so many students with so many interesting stories, doing study for so many different reasons. So the first thing we'll want to do when we talk to you is really just get to know you a little bit, know what would help you as a student on the course. Usually we'll have phone call tutorials, so we can arrange that via email. As Isabella said earlier, just check your details are up to date when you get access to everything online, make sure it's the right phone number and email address that you want people to contact you on. And then we'll start just like, I think Bryn used the word dialogue's really great as well. Just be a discussion, a dialogue about supporting you with your studies. So you can ask questions of your tutor. You can ask about the module materials, about assessments, just get to know them. They'll get to know you. And we can be flexible about how we communicate based on your needs and what works for you as well. So most people will be having phone tutorials regularly. If there's any reason why that's that's going to be challenging, we can find alternatives. There's there's a wide range of ways that we can work with you. I know you do the, the same, Isabella, and, and work individually yeah. with students as to what suits them. Absolutely. Yeah. So we, it's you'll see when you get the information it says the primary support there, there's lots of terminology that we use and we say with the primary first line support is one-to-one -one phone calls with your tutor but if you don't like phone calls we can do emails we can do online tutors actually and you'll see with most modules there are module wide online tutors but tutors can do individual ones we won't talk too much about online tutors because i think that might make some people nervous because they're thinking there's a bit too many things to be thinking of because we've got lots of people who are brand new to higher education so i know in one of the other broadcasts today we talked about what a tutor is but from your perspective bethan what kind of things would you be wanting to talk about you said about wanting to get to know your students first of all what kind of things would you like to find out about them first or would you like them to be able to tell you yeah, great question. So I often will ask, you know, what, what's brought you to access? So the same sorts of things you might have been answering on the ticker along here. And of course, you don't have to share anything you don't want to, whatever feels comfortable for you. And, but it can be really helpful to understand what your motivation is. Because as we were talking about earlier, it's like with any study as an adult, it's sort of about running your own race, really thinking what matters to you, what are your progress points? What are you trying to get out of it? And if your tutor knows that, then they can help to ensure that you achieve that. You might want to share any worries or anxieties that you have as you're starting. So oftentimes students might say to me that they may be a bit anxious about academic writing or something like that. And then I can reassure them that that's something we offer a lot of support with. And I can just keep a note for myself of, oh, that's something the student might be feeling a little bit unsure of, so that when I'm providing feedback, I can really focus it around that as well. As, as you were talking about earlier, the, the tutor feedback that you get it's supposed to be and will be really supportive and encouraging. And it's what we use the term sometimes correspondence tuition at the OU, mm. which is sort of a nice way of saying that we're teaching through feedback. So when yeah. you write something, you actually get asked in your first assignment to answer some questions about yourself and your motivation that you can then go back to at the end of the course. And it gives us a chance to then engage with you throughout all of our feedback with things like, yeah, you've really understood this. That's great. Have you maybe looked at page 32 where you can read a bit more about this? Or, you know, have yeah. you noticed this bit on the website? Because there's a lot to take in. It can be easy to miss things. Yeah. So that is very much a discussion and a, a conversation that's happening. So if you let us know when we get to know you at the start, if there is anything, you know, maybe it's around computing and you're not too sure about mm, IT yep. use or something like that. I, I mean, honestly, over the years, I've taught Access since 2018 or 2019. I've probably heard every possible worry <laughs> that people have, but you never know what, whether there could be something new. And we can usually reassure people about everything. So it's just about helping us support you as an individual. I'd say, how many yeah. students do you have a year for Access, Isabella? We usually well, don't I, have too I, many. Yeah, so we we in this, and actually this is a useful point for students to know. So in a tutor group, you probably there's only probably about fifteen students in a tutor group. So you'll see the other students in your group once you get the tutor allocation in your tutor group forum. But then there's the um, module wide forums that you might see as well, which is everybody studying. So it depends on the actual module, depends on how many. Because Y three four, which we'll hear about later in the in the broadcast, is probably the biggest and I think Y33 is the smallest but I'm not quite sure but there's there's a few hundred somewhere between a few hundred and maybe a thousand students studying in each presentation and we do this October start we do a February start and we do a May start now I know we've that Heidi's got some questions that have been coming in so I'm just going to go to Heidi now I think they're probably for Bethan they may well be for you so Heidi what kind of questions have we got that are coming in 
Um, so the first question that we've got from Emily who asks, who do we contact for support when we do not have the required evidence to qualify for alternative studying materials? Oh, that's a very interesting one. I think Bryn might be the best person to answer this one. I'm not sure. Bryn, are you able to give us a little bit of insight into that? I'm not entirely sure about that, to be honest. It's something we can find out. And I know that supplying evidence can be uh, difficult and sometimes costly and sometimes just not possible at all. Um, once Certainly once your module starts, if you contact your tutor, because they can get a message directly to us. But I will just look into it as well, Isabella, and try and get yeah, back thank to you, you something useful. Yeah. Thank you, because I think sometimes this is always the interesting thing about um, the these sessions is we forget our ask questions and we don't always know the answers. I think most of the time your student support team can give you some guidance. Um, this is the thing. It's like Beth Ann was just saying, we've heard most questions at different points, but we don't always know everything. And that's actually one of the interesting things, Beth Ann. I think, I mean, this is probably going to be a little bit of a off the wall one. What do you think is the most unusual thing that you've supported a student with in Access so far? So far, if you can think of that. Oh, that is an interesting question, not what I've been asked before. I just wanted to say to the other person that had asked about materials as well and, and when you can't provide evidence, it's always worth flagging it with your tutor because it might be something, it depends what it is that you need, but it might be something that we can access quite straightforward and then provide to you. Um, the reason I say that is that oftentimes students have asked me for PDFs of the books and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now that's something that's quite readily available. So that that's you know, a bit more straightforward to provide. So it does depend what it is. Now, the strangest things I supported students with. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's quite a wide range. So I supported one student who was planning to go on to study with the OU because I wanted to bring this up in terms of the great point someone made earlier about, am I going to go history or am I going to go classics or am yeah. I going to go, what am I going to study? Because oftentimes people start the access course with one degree in mind that they might want to go on to study. And of course, the access course is fantastic as and of itself. You could just do the access course. That's great. There is no pressure to sort of do more. The access course is just a wonderful thing to study and achieve in itself. Many people will go on to further study with the OU, partly because they'll catch the bug of loving OU study, like so many people <laughs> do and want to keep going. And other people might, you know, have already intended that they're going to start a degree. And you will encounter so many different subject areas that often people end up studying something that is quite different from what they anticipated. They might go down the English language route or they might decide they've got a maths frenzy. You know, it's whatever really kind of excites you as you study. So keeping an open mind is really worthwhile. Um, I did support a student a couple ago to actually go and study at a brick uni instead of the OU. Um, they went to study somewhere else. And we were able to, to offer some discussion around that and what it might look like, you know, so it's just being really open minded about how your tutor can ensure that support is offered. I've supported students um, with visual impairment quite a lot over mm -hmm. the years in terms of how to access um, different online tutorials and, and things in a way that's really supportive for them. And I've supported students um, where we've had to negotiate how we're going to to manage tutorials because they've wanted to do phone tutorials um but have had some difficulty around hearing so we found ways to to make that work in terms of me just adjusting the speed of how i speak the tone of how yes. i speak um being you know because if someone says to me actually that i'm not hearing very well then we could also mm -hmm. have um like you said earlier, online tutorials so that lip reading becomes yeah. possible. There's all Absolutely. sorts of things that can be. Yeah. What about you, Isabella? Anything particularly interesting yeah. stand out to you? I was just thinking about that. One thing I just want to mention is in the chat, we've got the lovely George and the lovely Gareth who have been sharing information and they've actually shared the details of the Access student support team. So we've actually got, oh, there you go. You can see the lovely Gareth and the lovely George on their photos on screen. Um, so they're, they're giving you lots of information in the chat as well. And the Access student support team is specific for Access students. So like Bethan says, if if you're not sure, if, if maybe I've, I've, I've supported students with speech challenges before and and as you say, it is something to get used to because 
you'll notice when I'm talking, I get quite hyperactive because I get so excited to try and enthuse people. And because I'm genuinely so enthusiastic about it. And sometimes I'm thinking, like you say, okay, rein it in a little bit, Isabella, don't talk quite so quickly. But sometimes we don't know in the same way as we said earlier, tell us, tell us if there's something about you, but tell us if we're doing something that's not helping if we're talking too quickly if we use terminology that we've forgotten to define if we've used those three letter acronyms and you're going i don't know what you're talking about it's our fault because we get so used to it myself i've been i've been working for the Open university since 2005 i've been accessed since about 2018 i think and you know how it gets a bit second nature it's like if you were trying to explain to somebody how to walk you get do that or how to do something you get so used to it that you forget that people are new so apologies in advance with so enthusiastic we love helping people but sometimes we need to get a little bit of um, additional guidance if we don't do that in quite the right way so actually it's probably a good point for us to actually step back a little and explain a little bit about what students see now Bryn told us about the block and we talked about the module website now in terms of the module website there's lots of really useful things on there to see so there's the study calendar and we mentioned things like alternative formats. Some people might not realize that alternative formats are there on every module website, aren't they, Bethan? Can you look, just tell people where to find them? Yeah, if you go into your resources section, you'll find loads of great things there. And I would say that if you are wanting to do a bit of study as you start to get started and you want to just dip your toe in, it's a good time to get a cup of tea and some nice snack and sit down and just explore the module website because you can't break it. You know, you can just really prod around and explore and have a nice time seeing what's available to you because there's loads of stuff on there from the lovely access forum where you can introduce yourself if you'd like and and or just um lurk and see what other people are saying if you feel more comfortable with that and um, you can just get involved have a look at the stuff that when it all appears for you on your student home click all the different tabs have a look at things like the information around assessment and how to pass the module there's lots of great videos to watch and lots of different things you can engage with so i think that that's probably something you're going to do quite a lot over the course of your module is just go on there and have an explore and you'll soon find all sorts of different resources and things and and then yeah. there may be things you can share with other students you meet on the forum if you decide to take yeah. that route of, of getting involved and saying hi Absolutely. And that's actually something when I talked to Sean later, who was one of my students in the access module earlier this year, he had some fantastic things that he developed, which we shared. I'm going to I'm going to talk to Sean in a little bit, a little bit later about that. Some of the very things which was absolutely amazing. He, he blew me away with the, the things that he was able to share. But I know we've had some people who are already worried about referencing. And now referencing mm. is something that always comes up. Um, I, first thing I would say is try not to worry. Referencing is not the be all and end all of module study. It's not the be all and end all of academic study at access level. You're just starting out. There's a few principles. I was just actually, I was sneaking. I was glad that Bethan was on screen because I was looking and in the, in the wire three, three access guide, and this is the kind of thing you'll see in the assessment guide, there's information about referencing. So when you open it there, and there's an explanation, explanation about what referencing is so i know that people have been supporting other people in the chat about referencing and some of that is about academic skills so the access module is not just about factual information so where bethan was saying whether you're going to do history whether you're going to do arts whether you're mm. going to think it's about skills so could you just give maybe one of your favorite skills that you help people to develop within their access study bethan Oh, well, the answer to that has got to be confidence, because that is what students Brilliant. often say they get from the access module is at the end of it, they feel so much more confident in the knowledge that they've they've learned, but in all of the skills they've developed over the course of their studies and more confident going to the next module. And I teach quite a lot of uh, year one and year two at degree level as well. And I, I can with confidence say that students who've done the access course often then come into those level one and level two courses with a, a really good head start in terms of referencing and things like that. The stuff that can be a little bit um, 
we don't use it in everyday life really do we in the same way that we might <laughs> use writing we don't tend to sort of go around sort of saying as stated by Henman 23 <laughs> you know we, it's not your normal sort of thing to do well, so we do I have do. to get used to it well you do <laughs> um, so I would say that really remember with the referencing is that that is what your tutors are experts in it in how it works at the OU and how to reference in all the resources available and you'll be really gently supported through that as you continue through your studies it's something we build up to you're not going to be expected to provide full referencing straight away in your first assignment or anything like that it's gradually introduced you'll dip your toe in the water and we'll introduce it and by the end you'll be having a go and it will be the same right. system one of the great things about OU modules is the consistency. So referencing will be the same across different modules. Module websites even look the same across different modules. So that once you've done one, that the reason that you might be more confident going forward is you've kind of become a bit of a pro, not just in your three letter acronyms, but where everything is and what everything looks like and, and how to do citations or references and things like that. So do rest assured your tutor is going to give you lots of lovely feedback and help and support Great. with anything like that. Thank you. And it's probably one of the top things people worry about, isn't it? I'd say referencing. Great. Yeah, it is. And I think one of the other things, and I think this would be a really good point to go to Sean, because I was mentioning about some of the brilliant skills that Sean did later. Now, one of the things that, as I said, completely blew me away was Sean's ability with time management. Now, Sean was an access module who started with me in February. We were talking about this last week and said it seems absolutely ages ago. But Sean, you mm -hmm. sent me this most amazing spreadsheet that you did about time management. Can you tell us and tell people a little bit about why you developed it and how it helped you to become a successful student? Hi everyone. Um, well, because I'm a dad of four, um, so uh, I'm dad taxi, uh, so I needed to take, <laughs> make sure I have time to study. So what I did was I created a spreadsheet uh, got all the modules, got all the sections of the modules, and then uh, put it all into the, the weeks that they were planning. And then I could see, I could delete it, I can move it about, shuffle it about, and so that I can effectively write, I can't study there, I can study there. Because, uh, you know what I mean? I've got my son's fencing three times a week, daughter's uh, um, swimming uh, once a week, and then, I want to sit down and have a beer watching the city match or something like that. Uh, so I had to make make sure I had time to do all the things, and and that's why I that's why I created it. Um, so we've got a little image that we can show people, which some people might look at and think is really complicated, but it's not too complicated, really, is it? And can you just talk through what people can see on the screen at the moment, please, Sean? So here you go. We've got all the weeks, uh, 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 week one to week 18, because I did the fast track module, there was only 18 weeks in that. Um, so the start of the week, the end of the week, and that's what you should be studying. Uh, uh, and then then you want to do the book one and study two for this week. And uh, on the, another sheet, um, it feeds into that. It, it tells you, right, I've got 100%, I'm on that week, I'm, right, I'm on track with that. And then you can see, right, week four, I'll be working on tutor marked assessment one. Uh, and then I say, yes, I've submitted it. So that does sense at 100 percent. So I'm on track with it. So it's just a tracker uh, to make sure I keep on on course and what, what I'm studying. Um, and I think and I, got I was just, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's a bit like why I said about ticking things off. And what I thought was great is because you've got yeah. this bit. And on module websites, you can tick things off and exit. And we're not saying to people they have to go out and develop anything. But what I found amazing, and I was, I, and I felt a certain amount of pride. I felt very proud of you, the fact that you developed this and you were willing to share. And you actually shared a, a, your YouTube video talking through this, which I think we can pop, hopefully we can share in the chat. But you, mm -hmm. you, this is the thing we were talking earlier about learning from other people and you spent time doing this but you shared it with other people why did you feel that you thought you, you that it was worth sharing with other people sean because it helped me um if it helped somebody else then so be it if i only helped one person then that was fine so i created two sheets and then obviously as, as you just stated um i created a youtube video because i intuitively know how my spreadsheet worked because um, I created it. But some people went, oh, I don't know what it is. So 
I created a YouTube video and uh, posted it, so and then put it into the forum, and I think a couple of people commented, oh, this is great, and things like that, but yeah. Great. And I think that was really useful because I know we shared it in the in the overall forum and some people were like, wow, we, it's not about scaring people. It's not about saying you have to do these things. And this is what I always want to make people know. Everybody's on their own study journey. But as you said, you had so, so many different things that you're managing. And every time I spoke to you, you were like, just being down to the bottom of Cornwall for my son's fencing. But he did really well. So I was, I was like, yeah, that's great. But <laughs> yeah. it's the managing life. Not saying that you have to be a father of four and, and, and dad's taxi to manage things, but there's all sorts of things. And sometimes recognising that there's different things in life. So how did you find managing study ag against life? Was it smooth sailing or did anything go haywire at some point along the way, Sean? It, 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 it did uh, go haywire. Um, I had a, a bereavement. Um, I fell behind in the studying. Um, uh, I caught up, I, so I, I, I talked to you when I, when, uh, when I, uh, because of the bereavement, um, the, and then you got contact with the student support team, uh, things like that, so the sort of special circumstances. I mean, my, my, my grade dipped a wee bit, um, but through my, my study planner, I'm like, well, I need to get back on track. I need to know exactly what I'm doing. So I deleted things, and uh, while it was off, um, and then, and then I got back into it. Uh, so, um, it, life happens. You know what I mean? It's uh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, but um, I, I got back on track and I completed the module, and I got a distinction, which is me as well. Um, <laughs> Love getting that one. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm very, yeah. very proud of everything you've done. And I think. The interesting thing so for everybody watching at home is the sean shared his time management have you people at home have you got any time management tips that you want to share or is there anything you want to ask about time management because sean's been very honest saying things went haywire he flew, fell behind maybe you missed that bit maybe you're still amazed by the fact that he had a, a, a spreadsheet and things but i remember when sean said i can't do it i had to have an extension and do things and i remember going well okay what can i as a tutor do to help um as a tutor, like Bethan was saying earlier, as tutors, we want to do the best. We can't solve things. We can't find any extra time. But hopefully um, you can think of things. So if you've, if you've got any little tips for time management. So because time management, time management goes alongside planning as well, Sean. So what did you find that you needed to do for planning? So you said that you were you were managing yourself amongst people. Did you have a particular place you studied? How did you manage sort of? space to yourself amongst your family and work? Um, well, it was at my uh, computer desk in my dining room. Um, uh, my wife studied uh, previously, uh, so she helped me. Okay. Um, she studied nursing. Um, what she used to do is she used to study upstairs and I'd keep the children occupied downstairs. And she did the same for me. Uh, so that helped me. Uh, it really helped me. So you need to get somewhere so you can study and not no distractions. Uh, that's how I got through it. I think that's a really key thing because it's very easy. Everything is a, is a distraction. Phones are a distraction. The internet is a distraction. The doorbells are a distraction. The back garden is a distraction. All these things. And sometimes it's the time for yourself. And some people may be thinking, but I don't really know what to do. But that's why we're trying to give you ideas. We're trying to give you things. Um, and chocolate is a very good, it's not a distraction. I'm being asked whether chocolate is a distraction. Actually, Sean, I don't think we ever talked about chocolate. Is chocolate one of your things? Or is there something else that's your, your treat? Actually, because that's the thing, treats and rewards. Do you, do you find that you rewarded yourself for successful study? Like I reward myself with chocolate. Yeah, a few cans of beer. Okay. So beer is your, okay, reward. Yeah, so, study that, yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, done a little bit. And actually, that's a question for everybody at home. Do you work for rewards? Actually, that's the thing. What do you do? What do you think is a reward? So I know, Sean, you have different things and you said a beer, chocolate's my reward. There might be other rewards that people have. Some, so sometimes some people might work with the sort of the carrot, um, the carrot approach, the, the restricting something until they've done something. Other time there's there's reward in terms of the the, the, no, the carrot. The carrot's not the, the carrot's the good thing. I'm 
talking about chocolate, the other C word, <laughs> chocolate's the reward that sticks the thing. Now, I think Heidi's got, I'll, I'll come back to Sean a little bit later, but I think Heidi's got some things and maybe be able to take over from me, who's just got a bit obsessed thinking about chocolate and can't talk at the moment. <laughs> Got some tips, some planning tips and ideas here from people that they're sharing in the chat, which is wonderful. One of the tips that I use is I am absolutely ruthless when it comes to turning off my notifications. And I've actually started this new thing where I turn off my phone at half past four on a Friday afternoon if my son's with me. Um, otherwise, he can't get hold of me. And then I won't turn it on again until half past eight on the Monday morning. And I make that my profile picture on WhatsApp. So I then get lots of messages on the Monday morning saying, oh, where are you? I've been trying to get hold of you. And it's like, well, you should have read my profile photo then and it helps so much to then just have that time off and when you're studying you absolutely need to have that focus because I am not great with the old discipline and if I get pinged you know what it's like people sending you really great YouTube videos and Instagram reels if I get pinged with that I'm off down that rabbit hole for 40 minutes so I turn off my notifications so Heather says um, stay on top of it every day even if it's just half an hour that's worked well for her Michael says I've put everything in my calendar my diary on my phone which is where everything that goes on in my life lives which is absolutely amazing as long as you don't lose your phone Michael hopefully it's all backed up on the cloud and I've bought an <laughs> academic diary and we'll use it for studying and also for daily life events and Deanne I love this my plan is to hunker down whenever I can I'm not going to stress myself out about it as long as it gets done I'm just going to squeeze it in whenever the opportunity presents itself I love that yeah. Deanne that's a great way of approaching it just being really kind to yourself and taking it a step at a time I think that's brilliant and Sean we've shared the link to your um, video in the chat because lots of people have been asking for it so thank you so much for that I'm super impressed by your excel skills I am nowhere near as proficient with excel as you are <laughs> I know that was why I was like wow and the fact that he shared it and there's a blank one that people can fill in which is which is really lovely so it's great to hear the different things I also understand that Deanne says I'll be rewarding myself for every word read yeah I think sometimes there's reward sometimes there's a little bit of over reward but now if I come back to Sean for a little bit Sean you would we, we talked about assessment earlier and I know that you you said that you did very well in the end but how did you find approaching assessment having not been in higher education and starting out in the access? What, what kind of things did you do to try and make sure that you were in the best place to do as well as you could? Um, well, feedback from you. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, and when I, I, I submitted an assessment and you got your feedback and sort of worked on the key points that you, you gave, just like things like um, in my life, I don't usually read everything properly. I just skim for the most important parts. So we need to read things properly, things that uh, what you're asked of you, things that are on, on the assessment, make sure it's clear. I know I went off on some tangents. I think uh, uh, TMA2 was just, I don't know, I was asking, uh, went somewhere else with the question. It was just completely disregarded. Um, but um, we fed back and again, I worked on it and, uh, and, uh, and I, well, I did, I did well after. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things. It's about reading the question, isn't it? And that's some one of the skills. That Bethan was talking about other skills earlier, but it's reading the question. I remember talking to you several times about that, Sean. Can you can you share a little bit of your insight about how you helped yourself to know what questions were actually asking, if you can remember? Um, no, it was just making sure uh, I when I when I read the question and then I did the assignment and then I didn't just forget about it and then I went back to it and then read it again and then read what I put and I went that's nonsense <laughs> or uh, what was I thinking when I, when, I, yeah. when I wrote that and things like that again it was just understanding of it uh, yeah what, what was asked of me and I think that's something that's quite new to students particularly students that have been saying they've been out of study um, for 40 years and so on, is none of the access questions are designed to be ambiguous. None of them are designed to confuse you. But sometimes we were talking about terminology earlier. It's about reading that terminology, reading what's actually said and answering that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Karen next. So Karen um, used to be the presenter of Student Love Live once upon a time before me. We used to do lots of things together. But Karen is the chair of the new access module Y034, which is very exciting and has got all sorts of terminology in it, which she was teaching me about the other day. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So. Share some of your excitement about Wire 3.4, Karen. Why is it so exciting? 
Well, I'm really pleased to be here today and, of course, accompanied by my colleagues in the chat, um, Gareth and George and John, of course, who are doing a fab job answering all questions. Um, Y34 is a new module and I'm really excited about it because I think in terms of some of the things students were talking about today, about what they want at the end of their course, what we're really trying to do is help students to learn with a book and online and to be able to feel really confident and to writing an essay in this sense because in social sciences and psychology and, and health and social care etc these are the real skills that we need to be able to master so um, what we've done is we've basically created a whole new course that I think is really exciting asking some phenomenally big questions but all um, disguised with some really key skills like time management note-taking reading using mind maps referencing um, writing academically all of those things are things that we teach students throughout the module um, in what I think and hope is a really engaging way. Great. So could you perhaps tell us about one of the big questions? Let's see. Let's see if we can understand wow. if you say one of the big questions. <laughs> The big one. Well, my favourite actually is, is block two, which is where students are going to come in the middle of the course, which is um, how fair is the world I live in? And that's just a, a huge oh, question. Okay. Unfortunately, there are no real simple answers to it. But I think that's our block question. And then we have lots of unit questions, which is each week of study, we take a particular aspect of something that may or may not be fair and, and we interrogate it uh, with different um, theories and models and ideas. Great. So you, you, I know you were telling me some terminology. Now, I think um, it, it's the terminology on the very interesting snail diagram. Is that is that the right one to be showing? It or is that a that different is a one? really good overview of the course, actually. Okay. Um, it, it shows how the Lovely. modules split up. So maybe we'll just take a brief look at that and then we can look at some of the terminology. Because um, this is actually, I know we've got students here who are not doing Y034, but this is um, a similar sort of thing. And it shows us those block questions as well. Um, it, it basically breaks everything down into weeks of study. So you start and end, full circle. Um, but what I think is quite nice and reassuring for many students here who've been talking about things like how to fit study in with the school holidays, and about, you know, what Gareth was saying about you don't necessarily need to read everything um, in the module material, which is very, very true, um, because it's all about having the strategy. And it works well with what Sean was saying with time management, because you can see here we've got some nice weeks where there are optional activities, TMA weeks and spaces to get a bit of a breather. And this is consistent throughout the whole access framework. It's, it's a similar sort of structure to each one, Isabella. Thank you, Karen. And I'm sorry, I don't know whether anybody could hear. I got the really bad giggles in the middle of that because I could just, I was doing it. I was doing this, trying to read it. And I was imagining everybody at home doing this, trying to read the snail diagram on the side, which was very unprofessional of me laughing in the background. Thing, I'm so it? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, can we just turn that side? No, 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 I'm on my head. Um, One of I, our and cut and paper enthusiasts, unlike Sean, will no doubt make a, make a little wheel thing that you can spin around yeah, so it's always upright. Absolutely. And you can put all of wheel those things fortune, in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you mentioned to me a particular term. Now I'm going to have to look it up. So you told me there was something about structure and agency. Now that was completely new to me. I think we've got the image of it, structure and agency, but me being me has promptly managed to forget it. So can you explain to us what you mean by structure and agency? Yeah, of course. Well, this is a diagram that um, one of our colleagues drew for us. Um, and it shows really some of the things to do with agency, which is basically, you know, our um, way of being able to do things in the world and the structures, which are various things in society that can either constrain or enable us. And it's rather like, um, you know, one of these things where we think, oh, am I going to do well in this course or shall I go for a run? Um, but actually some of those questions, you know, have a very simple answer. Shall I go for a run? Yes. But actually, perhaps going for a run could be really hard for people because maybe they don't have any trainers or, or, or a pavement like me down my road. And um, maybe they've got, you know, mobility problems, etc. So some of these questions require the dis distinction between agency and structure to be able to look at some of the tensions between them. And that's what we do with all these questions, Isabella, looking at fairness, looking at equality, and uh, looking at who we are. We sort of think, okay, what's our agency? What sort of things can we bring? What do we want to do and deliver? But also, what are the structures? What are some of the, you know, cultural things in our world or, or pavements or barriers, housing that can sort of constrain and, and you know, um, make us less 
successful in being able to do those. So it's really a case that there's not a clear and simple answer. Um, and this, you know, th these terms, I think, you know, they, they sound a bit sort of odd in that sense, but they're common terms for social scientists, because very often we like these frameworks to be able to look at various different things, but to take the same, you know, categorical things and say, okay, bearing in mind these different questions, how can we view that in terms of some of the things we want to do and some of the things that enable or disable us from doing that. So in a nutshell, that's kind of our structure and agency type thing. And it's the reason why, you know, we, we see so many students grappling with differences, you know, confidence, etc. because we've all got a different starting point. We've all got different stuff around us. And so we're all different in that sense. And we need to really, you know, consider the two and make the best of, of our own individual situation, as you said earlier. Great. So that actually, it makes me that it's, it sounds like what we're talking about overall. So even though this is Y through four, this is the whole thing. So I've got to try and get the right one. So I was trying to write it down. So the structure, anything that constrains. So it's terms with accessibility. We were talking about tutorials. So where I was talking with Bethan saying that ideally as a student, you will have phone calls with your tutor. But actually, if I've got this right, the structure may be that for some people, those phone calls might not work. Have I got that right? Am I am I applying it correctly? Have I learned something today? No, absolutely, absolutely. And they could be for different reasons. It could be because it's hard to hold a phone, or it could be because some people have, you know, difficulties communicating things. Some people just have a confidence issue and may not feel comfortable doing that. But I think it's about bearing in mind those things and thinking, you know, we could use them sort of as, as excuses, so to speak, or as, as things that we think, oh, well, I'm not going to do that because I'm not bright enough or I'm not whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really about thinking, okay, do I want this structure to be a limiter? Do I want to, to be limited mm -hmm. by this? Do I want to be able to do some of these things? And really, what are the barriers that I can and can't push? And what are the reasons for that as well? So I think it's, it's, it's again, you know, one of the whole messages of the module is, you know, you can pretty much do anything you want. It's just that some things are more complex and require a bit more thinking around some of those things to be able to, to do. So even though we've got these constraints, um, if we want something, it's very likely we can go about getting it. OK, so I think so for the people watching at home, maybe you could think about is there anything have you got barriers to study whether they're is that the right way for thinking about it because some people might have mental barriers you were talking about confidence so if people feel able to share maybe they could maybe people could share whether there's anything that they've thought of as a barrier to study in which case we can see whether we can we can either come up with some ideas or other people in the chat can come up with ideas because that's one of the really lovely things about the Open University and Student Hub Live, isn't it, Karen? That people learn from each other. I'm learning from you. I'm getting it written down. I'm trying to get my head around and you will correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. Because So have I got it right? Agency, have I got, did I write this down right? Agency, is that things that help or have I managed to write that down incorrectly? No, th things that can help can be within anything. Our agency mm -hmm. is basically our own will, what we want to do. I so know. if I want to go for a run, if I want to do well in my learning, um, if I want to be happier, I can use my agency. I can use my own motivations, goals and ideas to be able to do those. Those are things I want, but they're not always things I get. And that's where the structures are there. So the structures can be things like buildings, cultural differences, etc. Um, so they're things that can either constrain or enable us. So basically structures are social and agency is kind of individual that's a really simplistic way um, that I like right. to look at it okay so that's really helpful so the agency own will so where I was saying earlier everybody is on their own study journey when we do online workshops you may remember this Karen because I remember we, we we had that image do you remember it was sort of like walking through through some sort of mountains on and you were like right where are you on that feed? So if you can almost visualize that now, think about where you are. If you can sort of visualize a path going through the countryside, are you at the start of that path? Are you part of the way up the hill? Are you the amazing Karen? And because she's so active, she's she's already run up to the top of the hill. I'm still at the bottom going, <gasps> OK, I'm going to get part of the way there because it's, it's, it's very much your own journey, isn't it, Karen? Mm, absolutely. And I think one of the things that we see, um, Tonya and David are here also in the chat and they've been moderating our, our forum, which many students have come to already. And so many people have been talking about, you know, it's been a long time since they've studied, you know, lack of confidence, um, trying to fit things in with children, etc., caring responsibilities. So, yeah, we all have these different things going on. And I think one thing that we often think is, is that we're alone in that. You know, so many students say, oh, I'm worried about this. One, I'm worried about that. And they think they're the only one. Well, on this module, I think partly because, you know, we're, we're 
often feeding students into psychology and social sciences and criminology, counselling, those sorts of fields. Very often people who want to give something back in those you know, discipline areas are people who've maybe had challenges themselves. And so, you know, as a cohort of students, we have a really, um, you know, wide ranging um, cohort, basically, but but many of whom have real, real challenges. And the fact that they succeed on these modules and they gain confidence at the end of the module, we, we look at all of their feedback and it is just really, really awesome what they manage to achieve under often very, very difficult circumstances. So, yeah, it, yeah. it is quite, um, quite a special group of, of students, I think, on this module. Yeah. And it sounds fantastic because even though you're talking about Wire 3, 4, there's all these things that are learning. And I know we've got lots of people who've been sharing barriers. So if I go to Heidi now, what kind of barriers have people been sharing that they've been open about and that they've been that maybe been asking for help or maybe just sharing, Heidi? Yeah, lots of discussion in the chat. And I, I just want to commend everyone that has the bravery and, and the courage to be so open about some of the barriers they face, because actually by sharing that within the chat, you're going to be making somebody else feel better because they probably feel exactly the same way about you. And it's very reassuring for them. So Godwin and Jackie have been having a conversation around procrastinating which we're all guilty okay. of. Um, Godwin said, the amount of things I do before the thing I have to actually do is quite amazing. And Jackie said, you sound like me. I can find a hundred things to do and still forget what I was supposed to be doing originally. And then some of these barriers that um, our students experience. So Matthew says, illness is restricting um, time available and energy. Daniel says, my personal barrier is that I compare myself to others. That's a real common one, Daniel. I'm happy with phone calls with my tutor. I guess it's when I start doing it, it will all be okay. Absolutely. Um, Sukru says um, barriers with um, what Sukru defines as executive dysfunction. Um, Samantha, my self-confidence. And Kathleen says that she gets overwhelmed, which again is a really, really common one. So lots of people sharing their thoughts in the chat. And once again, thank you so much to those of you who are doing that. Right. Thank you, Heidi. So it sounds like, so Karen, there's a number of different things there. There are actually some quite psychology based things, aren't there? Um, so, I mean, it might be that I think you can probably give a little bit of insight about executive function, can you? Because it's a, it's a bit like terminology that's being used. But some of those things, maybe you'd like to say a little bit more about how students could maybe progress? Well, I think one thing to, to be mindful of, as Gareth said earlier, you don't need to do everything in this module. And the thing I'll add is that nobody's going to come and quiz you on everything in this module. So we often think um, that, you know, in this module, it's all about the content. And this is why um, those students who may have read our assessment guide and started looking at the introduction may have come across um, our learning goals. And I'm sure George will put some things in the chat about the importance of our learning goals. Only one of them is to do with knowledge. And the other two important ones that we assess in academic work are about thinking skills and communication skills. So this is the ability to select the important things that are there to answer a question, to be able to write in our own words and sort of say who said what kind of thing. But the knowledge is often what students worry about. And, and I know in the chat people have been talking about all oh, retaining information and how hard it is to do that. You don't need to do that. That's not the point of this module. In fact, all access modules are about giving you those skills so that if you need to go and find something, you know how to go and do it. If you need to think about something critically using maybe different lenses like structure and agency or ways of thinking, hey, is this theory really doing what it says on the tin? Can it really be applied to the real world? So it's those things, those changes in our, our thinking really um, that are really important. But in psychology terms, Isabella, the sort of question you asked around executive function is something we don't go into in a huge amount of detail. Mm -hmm. But one thing I will share um, about some of these things that, that students who later go on to do psychology look at is we have various different ways of looking at things like memory or learning and learning is that sort of you know absorption of information and including it in your sort of narrative being able to understand that not just being receptive to it but learning about it and why it matters and then being able to remember it um, so a thing in Wales at the minute is this 20 mile an hour speed limit type thing so mm, I might know it yeah. um, I yes. might only be able to retain it if I realize that actually I can't really afford any more points on my license and then I might be able to you know remember that pati at particular times but knowing something isn't just as simple as necessarily reading it or remembering it so for those students mm. who are kind of looking at this book and thinking gosh there's a lot in there I'm never going to be able to remember that or maybe people who finish their studying put the book down and think well I'm not really sure what I read the important thing is the skills and it's being able to refresh and look at that and thinking ah yes I was thinking about what that theory said yeah. and I was thinking that it may apply to this but not to that that's the important thing so yeah it's that yeah. that that sort of you know 
in, you know, internalization of, of the sort of things that, that really matters, not being able to recall it, which is the last process of, yeah. of what we call memory. Yeah. So in fact, you'll see that question that's going past. It was almost as if by magic that we thought that would be. So how do you know when you're doing something well? So think about that. So Karen's just said at the end, the recall is the very last thing. How do you know when you're doing something well, Karen? What kind of do you do you sort of go? Yes, I feel OK. Do you ask somebody else? Do you do you, there's sort of internal and external knowing, isn't there? Well, there is, Isabella. And I think this is one of the things I've been told off when writing this module for using too many sporting analogies. But actually, I think sporting <laughs> analogies, I'll bring up now while I can, are a really useful way of doing this because, um, it, it, and it's one thing that sort of undermines the course, right? I could, al I always go around saying, oh, I'm really slow at running. I'm not as good at this. I'm not as good at that. And I used to find that really unhelpful because effectively all I was doing was beating myself up with a stick. I didn't know I wasn't mm. doing well. I just wasn't doing well enough for what I thought should be better. And that nebulous yeah. idea was really, really not helpful. So now I know that I'm running at this particular pace and I know I'm doing well if I've been able to run at that particular pace and deliver what's in that training session, for example. That's how I know I'm doing well. And so I guess for our students, you know, it's that whole thing of assessment. If we ask you this and you write about that, but do it brilliantly, you're not doing well because we've asked about that, but you may be doing well in other things. So I think it's all about this benchmarking and thinking, OK, I can only say I'm doing well if I've got a clear idea of a goal. So in the module, um, I've introduced SMART objectives and we try to encourage students to be really specific because if my goal is do heaps of studying on a Saturday, mm. I may reach the end of that Saturday and think, oh, I haven't really done very well because I've been on my phone, I've been doing this. But if yeah. I were to set a goal saying, um, I'm going to read unit one and I'm going to do all the activities and I'm going to plan my time for next week. And I've got some specific things there. I can kind of know I've done well. So for me, and, and I, I always beat myself up with a stick. I'm always saying I should be fitter. Mm. I should be thinner. I should be, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. But it's not helpful, I don't find. Yeah, I think, and that's a really interesting point about comparing to others. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask each of the guests there about how they know when they're doing something well. So um, if I come to Bryn first, what kind of things do you use? Is there anything that you use as a measure to know when you're doing well? Um, yeah, I think I like um, the SMART goals idea and I find it useful, especially that very measurable thing. So, you know, I can kind of go right if I have done this this and this then it will be that will be sort of good enough in that sense yeah. and and just it's because it's either that or actually my anxiety goes nuts because it, it it kind of imagines this unattainable goal of achievement it's it's kind of weird where you break oh, I think where achievement can be utterly intangible you can you can never define it and then you can therefore spend the rest of your life incredibly anxious. So, yeah, definitely the idea of having a measurable target where I can go, right, job yeah. done. We're good. Great. And I think that's a really important thing to mention because some people get very anxious. Karen was saying, I can never be good enough. I'll never be thin enough. And, and we compare ourselves to others and, we, and that can make you anxious. As I said earlier, healthy competition, fine. If it works for you and it makes you feel okay, great. But if that's going to be bad, if you beat yourself with a stick, like Karen said, please don't do that. Now, I think Heidi has got some tips. I'll come to the other guests in a moment. But Heidi, you've got some tips that, that students have been sharing, haven't you? Yeah, well, I've got a brilliant one from Michael. So Michael has said that being part of these chats and seeing everyone's introductions in the forum has really made me feel like I'm not alone with my worries, which has really helped me, which is right. wonderful to hear, Michael. And you've just offered up a brilliant tip. So Michael says, while I think of all my concerns, I'm making a list of them in a Word document and I'll bring each of these up with my tutor as soon as that tutor is allocated. So I think that's a brilliant idea of being able to capture them all down on paper in a nice, clear, succinct form and then you know that you can work your way through them and get your tutor's reassurance um, so I thought that was a really great tip that Michael shared so thank you for that Michael. Lovely brilliant so Bethan I mean that's great the, the, the fact that Michael said he wants to bring things to a tutor is there anything what, what would you say either to students or how do you measure what, what kind of things do you do? Well I love that Michael has mentioned writing because a lot of what you were just talking about, I kept thinking, oh, writing's great for this, writing's great for this. Um, be really self-compassionate with yourself if you can. And something that I like to do is, I, I read about it in a book once and I think it's great, is if you're feeling really stressed out and you're feeling a bit down on yourself and you've had a difficult time, and I did 
part-time study myself with really young children. It was really hard. And half the time I just had to say, if I've got through the day, then I've, I'm do- winning. I've done great. You know, it's OK. But I like the idea of write a letter to a friend if they were in the same position as you. So you imagine your friend saying to you, I'm really overwhelmed. I haven't done much in my study. How's it going? What would you say to them? And write down what you'd say to them. And then remember that actually that letter is for you because we often would not talk to ourselves, you know, to our friends the way we talk to ourselves. We could be so down on ourselves in a way we wouldn't if it was to somebody else. So just try and get that voice thinking how, you know, what would you say to someone else? You'd say you're doing amazing. And and I have to say that I'm sure that most people here and almost everyone here will finish this course and do wonderfully. But I also would like to say that actually sometimes things don't go to plan and and that's okay as well. Life can be really, really challenging. And yeah. the OU is brilliant because it's so supportive at helping you um, complete your course when you're ready. And that might mean sometimes taking a bit of a break and that's okay too. Yeah. So going back, so we've mentioned some of the struggles. So how do you know when you're doing well, Bethan? So what? how do you personally measure when you're doing well? Well, I'm always doing well, Isabella, because <laughs> you've got to, I have to believe it. <laughs> So I think I do just try and always think, you know, life has so many ups and downs. I don't want to be hard on myself if things aren't. I mean, getting Mm -hmm. feedback from your tutor is obviously great. So if you aren't worried that you're not doing well, I could like drop a note and say, I sometimes ask my peers, my colleagues, like, am I doing okay? Have I got this right? Have I understood what was here? Um, But I also have a really strange little system. You were talking about chocolate being your like habit of reward. Mine is stationary. <laughs> cheap stationery so okay. I do this thing with post-it notes where I got it from a friend an American friend at a university I used to work at and I'd go into her office at the start of the week and there'd be like post-it notes all over the door and at the end of the week there wouldn't be any post-it notes and I'd be like what, what are you doing so she'd write at the start of the week everything she had to do on an individual post-it note from like you know read this chapter Um, write this do this you know pick up the dock whatever it was and stick it all on the wall and when when it was done she'd take the post-it note off so you know you're doing well when your post-it notes have all gone (laughs) at the end of the week that's what I was just looking for I was looking for my post-it notes I had I had a whole load of ones with little animals on (laughs) Karen's seen them before and they've disappeared so clearly either the elves have got them or I've stuck them somewhere sorry that was what I I was looking for but that's a great it's made me very sad Isabella that this year um, there's there's a Wilco in the town that I lived in I used to go down to Wilco and get my post-it notes so I'm really sad about the loss of Wilco I'll have to go to the works now to get my post-it notes other other brands are available other brands are available (laughs) yeah (laughs) but so Sean as a student you mentioned about the things about getting marks and things so how you said about feedback as well but I don't want to put words in your mouth how did you Sean know that you were doing well as a student um just uh understanding what was expected of me and and as as you say that the marks Right, you, you see an improvement of of the, of the sort of marks that, that I did when when I started taking in the feedback. It wasn't there right mm-hmm. at the beginning, but um, when I when I started taking in the feedback, doing what you you yeah, were you were uh, what I was asked to be and what you, and then our tutorials, and then putting that in the assignments and again it, that's that that showed me my progression against it, and that's sort of the measurable standard that I was doing. Great. So, did you feel? Did you ever feel that you knew you were doing well at some point? Yeah, at the end. Great. Yeah. So you you, was, you learnt that. Yes. Yeah. So when I was doing my end of module TMA with TMA four, um, I knew I was going to I was going to do well in that because uh, um, all the stuff that I was understanding the questions. Uh, I was uh, all my feedback that you got from you, and and I, and I actually put it into my assessment and 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 looked through. Uh, uh, I need to do that. I need to do that right. And and then when I got to the final grade, which is uh, which really really chuffed about, um, that was when I knew that it all came together. Yeah, so that's a that's a really good thing to be thinking about. So one of the reasons why I wanted Sean on, it, other than the fact that he had the mil- brilliant time management and planning things, was because <coughs> he came through. And that's the, the key thing from what Sean just said that I'd like people to hear is 
at the end he realized not saying it will only happen at the end and i'm going to come to karen again in a moment because she'll be able to give us a bit of insight on this maybe from the social sciences perspective but sometimes beth ann was saying she asked other people and it's this idea sometimes you ask other people but sometimes you know so karen can you tell us a little bit about that maybe from the psychology of learning for people that are just starting out who may be thinking how do I know if I'm doing well? I don't know. I need somebody to tell me. Can you give us a little bit more insight? Oh, that's a really hard question, Isabella, but a really good one. Let me try and see how I can answer that. Um, I think, you know, many students um, here have been talking, and in fact, I identify with this, and I think Bethan said it as well, about just getting up in the morning. And sometimes that whole notion of putting one foot in front of the other is so important. Um, doing things and keeping moving, I think, is really important just in terms of doing well. You don't get to the end unless you take very little steps. And it's like that when, you know, when you're doing an Ironman, you have to take very, very slow and tiny steps, but every little step will help. And if you stay still you don't go anywhere even though you feel like you're not maybe getting anywhere fast so I think one is in terms of assessment and it's why we have assessment at the Open University it's also why we don't look at drafts or anything like that Isabella because you know mm -hmm. students need to learn from the feedback that they then submit um, which is all weighted so very early on it, it doesn't matter a huge amount it's only worth say maybe 10% later on it matters a bit more because it's um, you know it counts for more in terms of the grades that make up your overall assessment but ultimately um, you know, doing these skills and, and, and progressing to the end gives you great confidence and everything like that. You don't even actually have to pass an access module to get to level yeah. one um, either. So, you know, those things are good to know. But I think for me, um, in terms of psychology, it's about where your own goals and direction are, your own agency. Some students mm -hmm. want to pass. Some students want to really enjoy things. Um, some students want to do really well. And I think it's really important to bear that in mind because you can't hit yourself with the stick unless you know where your benchmark is. Like when I was an OU student in my early 20s, I loved psychology. I didn't really love following the guidance, though. I was really interested in stuff. I used to go and research all the sorts of things I shouldn't do. But I had a blast and I wanted to learn my way and do my kind of things. My peers, on the other hand, were reading the assessment guidelines religiously, <laughs> following them and getting much better grades. But they were doing something kind of different. And I think it's always important to bear in mind that I knew they were getting better grades because they were delivering things. But at the time in my early 20s, I thought I'm not complying with such nonsense. Um, so I think it's really important to bear in mind that everyone has different stuff, but you know, a, a number is a very poor indication. A sense of improvement from one TMA to another is also not the best because they're all assessing different kind of things. So you can't sort of view it like a trajectory. Um, and they've all got increasing complexity, which is why they're worth more towards the end. So, you know, it's all about really that level playing field. You can only measure whether you're doing well by knowing actually what it is you're trying to achieve and then thinking, how might I know? And this is something social scientists do all the time. Mm -hmm. How do I know? How does this theory or how does this idea make sense? What measures can I put in place to test it? How can we research the world around us and use some sort of evidence to support this? I know I'm doing one well on my assignment because I aimed to do this and I achieved to do that and that's the way yeah. as psychologists we kind of try to answer those questions with some evidence to support these points yeah so that's a really important point and I know that not everybody that's watching is studying psychology but the reason why I'm asking Karen all these things is because we are all people so we all have these things going around fizzing around in our heads we have all these impressions we have these emotions we have the anxiety that Bryn was talking about we have these different things where things go wrong that Sean was talking about and there's things but you are all students so you're all learning and you're all on the access module and that thing that Karen was talking about is that the we keep saying please don't measure yourself against others I know and this is one of the things that's the big difference between school and higher education and the access module is because at school you get these things and oh yeah and I remember one of the reasons why I switched away from doing A-level maths is because I really really struggled at the start of A-level maths and every time we had a test you had to give the, the the marks you got out of 20 and everybody was saying oh yeah I got 19 and I got 20 and stuff like, and I had to go I got two and everybody would just swivel and look at me and and I was just, I felt I was just totally shrinking inside going, well, clearly I'm a failure because I've had to tell everybody. And that's a really dangerous thing, isn't it, Karen, to sort of feel that you're being told that you're not good enough. Mm. 
Mm. It's, it's actually the topic of, of the second unit in block two, where we talk about self-esteem um, and this whole notion of feeling not good enough, because so many of our students have this massive sense of, of imposter syndrome, which in psychology is this idea that you're kind of an imposter, you're acting like something and nobody really knows that you're a, a huge fraud underneath it all. And I think so many students coming to access, I don't know whether anyone in the chat identifies with this kind of thing today, they think, oh, everyone's much better than I am, everyone will be able to nail this, everyone knows what they're doing. I'm the only one who's got kids running around my ankles and, you know, all sorts of shenanigans going on. Um, so, yeah, that whole notion of how I'm good enough, we, we talk about in terms of self-esteem. And again, that whole notion of measuring some of these things, we can only know how good we are or something if we if we actually look at it and think critically, well, how good are some of those scales? How helpful really are they? Right. So I'm just conscious that we've been really serious, haven't we, Karen? Now, we know when we talk about things. Now, I've mentioned chocolate. We haven't got your lovely doggies in the background, but I wanted to just go get a little bit light because I don't want people to think that it's all serious and access is lovely. And I'm, as I said, I normally get hyper and I've realised that I've got really, really quiet. So I just want to talk... I want to tell people a couple of stories that hopefully will encourage them. So um, Karen knows that I love strongmen and I love watching strongmen and I like watching strongmen because I, I can't do it. I can't. I mean, yeah, OK, I, I can move a couple of things. If I don't I don't lift or anything, but it's about seeing people achieve things. And the reason why, as I said, why I loved having Sean on, because I saw him progress through the module. And Sean said about how he progressed through the module. Life wasn't happy. Life didn't go brilliantly. But. He made the decision. He went and go, get happy. And I like chocolate. Chocolate's amazing. Um, so I find that um, chocolate really makes me feel happy. Um, I don't have it all the time. Um, I do have uh, a number of different types of chocolate. And I know that you find that um, exercise makes you happy, isn't it? So just in terms of a little bit of a little bit to sort of to end on a high note, some suggestions about things that can help students. So we, we've talked about lots of things about, um, we, we probably did a little bit more of the, the constraining the structure and the, and sometimes get anxious and things, but this agency about how you can make yourself realize how brilliant you can be, because everybody here is watching you. You're fantastic. You've made the decision to be an OU student, which is wonderful. You're starting out at access. You're going to gain some of those skills. What what other positives can you tell people that they're going to get, Karen? Oh, I think they're going to get so much from doing this. And I think for so many people, it's that satisfaction that they're doing something for me. You know, it's time to change that agenda. People who've talked about having bad experiences beforehand. This is something really that is completely nourishing, I think, for you. And not only does it help you write an essay, but it really helps you win arguments in the pub because you can back up all your points <laughs> with evidence. You can construct a logical argument. You can critically look at the world around you and say, hey, Daily Mail, I've read your article saying chocolate's good for everyone but when I look at it I can see this and we've got these frameworks to help students do some of these things and I think that not only do you get the satisfaction of maybe even to your children saying you know I'm at university now I'm doing this module I'm learning all these things but you learn how to balance your time and squeeze everything in you learn about all these things about how to argument, how to back your points up with evidence. And you get that confidence, I think, as you're working through your assignments and getting that feedback there from your tutor to know that you're improving and developing something. And many students, I think, you know, don't want to go on and do a degree. Many do. Mm -hmm. But some yeah. students just think, I just want to know that if I wanted to, I could. Or I just want to know that, you know, I can get some of these skills and get that confidence. So I think this course gives you so much. And what I've really tried to do on YA34 um, is to apply some of those things. So if we're talking about a theory or whatever, how can our students take something away from that that they can apply anywhere in the rest of their life? So I think, you know, studying with the OU, meeting all these other students, having that me time and trying to carve that out and protect it is just so valuable. But ultimately, it changes the way you view the world. It changes the way you think. It gives mm -hmm. you new tools. And for me, that is really exciting. But it means sometimes, you know, I always say to my daughter, don't ask questions you don't want to know the answer to. Sometimes that knowledge can make you think about stuff like all the no. questions I'm having at the moment about sustainability, which features in our module as well, yeah. and environment. So these things change things, but they also give you the tools. And I think for me, that feels really empowering. And I hope our students yeah. get a sense of that as they're working through it. Absolutely. And that's what we really want to do. I think empowering is a good thing and recognising that 
being here, listening to these things, there's lots of really good points. And I want to go to Heidi just before I finish up to get a little bit of a flavour of what, what, what's what been going on in the chat or whether you've got anything you want to add. It's just of your little pep talk, Heidi, about that kind of this idea about of of empowering and, and being great. Absolutely. We, yeah, we've got some great comments in the chat. Um, so firstly, I would say I found that studying actually becomes addictive. And in the beginning, it might feel that you're nervous and you're apprehensive and you're thinking, how am I ever going to get my head around this? Trust me, in a few years time, once you've completed your qualification, you'll be in the same boat that I'm in now. So I did my undergrad over six years and then I took a little bit of time off and then I was back into my postgrad and then I thought, oh, phew, it's all done. And now I'm thinking, what do I do with myself? I've got to go back and do some more study now. So you'll probably find that you're in the same boat. Um, Anne's put a lovely comment in the chat saying, I feel like I've crossed one hurdle already, logging into this chat and seeing everyone's views and knowing that I'm not doing this on my own. Um, Christine says that um, I've done well if I've got out of bed and made to start on something even if I don't finish it it's just taking that first step Christine yeah. absolutely um Daniel says I feel that I know that when I'm doing something well because I am truly in the zone of what I'm doing and time is flying by Suzanne says, I know that I'm doing something well if it takes a piece of me in the short term, but in the long term, I feel like I've gained. It's important for me to keep sight of my goals. And I love this one. Gabrielle says, um, there is a quote um, I tell myself, can't remember by who, but it goes, good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. So I thought that was a really nice one to finish wow. on. Okay, I don't think I'm anywhere near the best bit yet, but I think it's, I think, as we finish up, we really want people to hear, everybody that's starting out, you're starting out, it's the freshest of the week, I know people are nervous, you'll start to get some more information, um, we've obviously shared lots of ideas in the chat, we, you'll see that there's a feedback form in the chat as well, we do welcome feedback to make sure that we're doing the best we can, if there's particular events that you think would be really helpful, I know everybody's head will be doing like I do what I call my go, my head goes all fizzy, because uh, there's so many things that we want to say, and so many things that we could have said, but just please hear this, that you are starting out. So that, that quote about the being better, but so you are trying to better yourself. That is fantastic. You're making the first step. They're your steps. Remember that illustration that I was thinking about and we were talking about with Karen earlier, wherever you are on that pathway, whether you are still at the bottom of the path, whether you're part of the way along time, whether you're hanging off the side, whether you're feeling you can't even start or whether you are part of the way up the mountain, you're at the top, you're waving, wherever. Your study journey, you measure yourself against yourself. The brilliant thing about access is there's lots of reflection. You get to think about what you're doing, what you're hoping to achieve, and you will do brilliantly. You will do the best job you can do because you're you. So have a lovely rest of your day, everybody, and hopefully we'll see you at another event soon.